hack on uh, online. Uh, And uh, so this afternoon, actually, <clears throat> I was announcing hands on a bit early. We we decided it was uh, good after the the back to basic uh, part that we had this morning to to propose something a little bit more um, in focus uh, on hot topics. Uh, so there uh, we will start a session uh, giving by um, Raphael and uh, Kongduk uh, on. Um, on uh, two hot topics for these uh, uh, <coughs> mini computers and low cost uh, cameras. One will be uh, on uh, more edge computing uh, for IoT, so it will be a specific uh, topic in itself. It's only a, a short uh, presentation, so it will give you a glimpse of, uh, of uh, questions which are on this, um, on this side. And also, we have seen basic RGB cameras uh, from Raspberry uh, this morning with uh, with Vincent and how uh, they could be uh, improved by uh, calibration. And uh, Kongduk will give us also a glimpse of a, of a, a question related to um, of issues that you may uh, be concerned by when you are using these uh, systems in terms of uh, co um, power co consumption, uh, transfer of uh, data, um, and also uh, real-time uh, pro processing. So after we will have uh, a three hours of um, of uh, hands-on to finish the the day, uh, where we will have uh, a little bit of uh, coding and a live demo that you will be able to be part of. So uh, some uh, participants have joined during this short introduction. So uh, uh, you told me that Raphael was you were starting. Yes. Yeah, so I will start. So, uh, can you, you see my screen now? Um, not yet. Uh, yes. That, that's good for, for us. Yep, good. Yeah, okay. Thank you. We listen to you, uh, Rafael. Yes, thank you very much for the introduction. So, I will present uh, you uh, work that we have made with one of my PhD students, Joseph Azar, and this work is entitled. An efficient IoT data compression approach with reconstruction, reconstruction on the edge. So in this uh, presentation, I will first introduce the motivation and the scope of the presentation. Then I will talk about uh, data reduction um, and ubiquity. So I will give you some examples and the, uh, I will present the compression approach that we have proposed. I will give you some uh, results and then I will make a preliminary um, introduction on compression on images. So first, uh, why we are interested uh, in um, uh, try trying to 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 um, to compress information. So uh, we are on um, with IoT. So uh, we have different uh, layers. First, we have a, a first layer in which you generate some data. Then we need to communicate the data to a server on which uh, you can process the data. And then finally, at the last layer, you can uh, interpret the data you have. On the first layer, you have an uh, uh, energy uh, uh, problem. You, can have, uh, you could have energy problem, and you have a, a ubiquity. Uh, so what is interesting is to reduce the amount of data that you will transfer uh, with the communication in order to have uh, the small uh, amount of data as possible on the edge or on the fog. And on the edge and on the fog, you can use different techniques, for example, uh, filtering, enhancement uh, of the data, data augmentation, classification, or, or so on. So in this work, what we are interested in, uh, we are interested in reducing the, uh, the data, and uh, we can consider different scenarios. Uh, first, we will consider the scenario in which you are uh, data, uh, you are in the case of um, body area uh, sensor network. So you have uh, some sensors on, on you, one body, for example, and one sensor is able to uh, measure one physiological features. But in practice, what you can have is a real world application in, on which you can have different uh, other sensors that can measure uh, multiple physiological features, or you can have a wearable computing in which, 
for example, this uh, smartwatch is able to measure different um, physiological, physiological uh, features. And <clears throat> according to what you are doing, you can, ha can have less ubiquitous or, or more ubiquitous uh, according to the device that you are using. So the goal is this in this work is to try to reduce the, the data. And for that, what we will try to do is to use compression on multivariate medical time series. What we would like to do is to have a, a method that allows us to compress floating point arrays, because most of the time, if you have integer, it can be interesting, but it's more interesting with floating point arrays. Uh, in order to uh, achieve high compression ratio, what we will do is um, we will use lossy compression, so we are ready to lose information, and we will see how to uh, uh, tackle this. And then uh, we would like to control this loss of information. What we want is to have something uh, as fast as and as efficient as possible on the device, because we have a low amount of energy. We would like to have something which is near real-time application and uh, easy to deploy, and uh, that is work that works well with uh, smooth or jagged um, time series. So what we propose to uh, use is uh, an approach that has been uh, proposed by a French uh, colleague, which is called Franck Capello. Uh, sorry for the capital, I, I uh, forget it, and his team in. Uh, in the USA, so they are working on uh, data compression in the high performance computing. And what we propose to do is to adapt their techniques for IoT. What is the principle uh, with the method they propose, which is called SZ for squeeze? Uh, you have a two dimensional uh, input array. And what we will do, uh, we, we, you will flatten uh, this two dimension array. Then we will try to make prediction of uh, the, you will see the correlation uh, in, in the data. And if you have some data, what is interesting to do is to predict what will be the uh, next value. So if you are um, able to make a good prediction, uh, it means you are able to, um, to, to fit uh, the, the data you have and to reduce the amount of um, of uh, data needed. And uh, the method they, uh, have pro they have proposed is uh, very interesting because it enables to uh, make prediction with different kinds of uh, fitting. So I will not detail this in precisely. What is interesting is after you have used this uh, method, you have a part of data which cannot be uh, predicted uh, anymore. And at the last layer, what you, or last step, what you will do is to use lossless compression, which is a standard compression, either the Huffman algorithm or LZ77. So this method is very interesting for uh, high performance computing. What we have done is to adapt it for uh, the case of IoT. And what proposed uh, the PhD student, uh, Joseph Hazard, uh, uh, who worked with me, is to uh, try uh, to uh, combine this approach of lossy compression with another approach of uh, standard discrete um, wavelet uh, transform. So with that, you have an input signal. You will, with the DWT, um, split your signal in uh, two classical uh, um, parts, one for the details and one for the approximation. So suppose you have this uh, 1D signal, the first level of approximation will be this one and the second one will be this one. So uh, the goal uh, in the combination is to see if it's efficient or if it's interesting to use this um, classical discrete wavelet, uh, wavelet transform with uh, with uh, lossy compression. So the DWT uh, will uh, give you the data smoothing and uh, denoising. So this is the general uh, approach we have proposed. So you have an input signal here. It's a multidimensional uh, time domain. 
because uh, of the wavelet transform, you will have only uh, the, um, uh, the approximation uh, of, uh, you will only um, consider uh, the approximation of your signal. Then you will uh, transform uh, your uh, n-dimensional signal in a one-dimensional. We will apply the SD approach, which will we will um, use the best uh, fit curve fitting. Then it will represent the data in binary format that will be compressed. And after the compression, you can send this um, binary format on, uh, on, for example, uh, Wi-Fi or uh, LoRa or a, any communication uh, you want. And on the uh, edge, what you will do is to be able to uh, use uh, the um, SD decompression, then the wavelet transform in order to um, return in the uh, time domain uh, of your signal. And then what we will use is a deep learning model to enhance uh, the, um, the data representation. So the goal is to uh, see what um, what threshold is interesting in the um, SZ compression and in the DWT uh, um, level of uh, decomposition. So here it's <coughs> a time series uh, data set that I will present in a few seconds. And what we can observe is here, if we compress the signal uh, very uh, uh, significantly, of course, we will uh, use uh, lose a lot of accuracy. Uh, <coughs> so the accuracy is here, and the uh, compression ratio is here. So it's with the uh, SZ uh, method, and with the DWT, it's almost the same. The more you compress your data, of course, you will lose some information. So the goal is to define a good trade-off between both these uh, method. What we can observe here, so it's a uh, data set that we took on the UCR uh, time series, so it's available on the internet, so there are several data sets that are available, and what we can observe is with uh, SD, the more we compress, so it's here, we will uh, obtain a uh, necessary, a very good uh, compression, but of course, we will lose some um, some accuracy. And uh, what uh, we observe here is uh, with uh, DWT, it's not very easy to compress a lot. That's why <coughs> we try to to mix between DWT and SD. And uh, what is interesting is uh, it's possible to 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 measure um, what you have. <coughs> What you have gained and what you have lose with uh, the different um, uh, scenario. And at the final step, I, I uh, mentioned that we uh, are able to use um, uh, encoder, decoder, so autoencoder method uh, with deep learning and with different uh, architecture. So we try to see which of the uh, different uh, autoencoder network is the best to make the prediction. So uh, in, this is the detail of uh, the autoencoder. I will not detail all the parts. It's more or less uh, a method which is similar to UNET, which is used for, it's, um, it's an autoencoder in which you have a skip connection like this. So there are several layers. I will not detail this. Uh, um, with so much uh, detail. What is very interesting is that we uh, were able to apply this on real data like ECG uh, with a smartwatch or PPG. So this is signal which is uh, periodic. If we use the uh, data compression uh, after the, um, the wavelet transform, we can see in green that we lose a lot of uh, information. So all the details in the original data are completely uh, lost. But what is interesting after, after the uh, decompression and after uh, the um, autoencoder, we, we are able to reconstruct the signal, not uh, 
completely uh, similarly to the um, to the base to the, the first signal, but it's very um, very similar. And we are able uh, to do that on a different kind of signal. And what is very interesting, we can compress the signal very significantly because the ratio uh, compression ratio is between 80 uh, to 100. So uh, we made some experiment on uh, IoT ASP32 uh, and a smartwatch which is called Polar. What we can see, uh, of course, uh, the transmission uh, without uh, reduction uh, compression is very important. And if we are able to uh, compress uh, uh, the information, of course, we will uh, gain a lot of energy. And uh, on the polar, what we observe is if we do uh, nothing, uh, we will lose a lot of energy. And if we are able to compress and transmit less signal, of course, we will uh, gain some energy. So uh, this was a, a first presentation on uh, YND signal. I will uh, very quickly present some uh, preliminary, preliminary results on image compression. The goal is to compress images with standard format to see if it's possible to, uh, to transmit uh, very um, small images and if we are able to reconstruct them on the edge or on the cloud. So what we will do, we will take uh, an image on uh, IoT uh, devices. We will scale down the image, so reduce the size by, for example, four in each dimension. Then we will compress it with a very low rate quality. We will send a very small image and on the cloud, we will uh, be able to uh, reconstruct this image. So this is the... Uh, the schema, we have, uh, for example, this uh, IoT uh, device, which costs um, between 10 or uh, 20 euros. Uh, this device is able to uh, compress uh, the image uh, you have with a JPEG, for example. Then we will uh, use downscaling, we will compress it. So, for example, this is a compression. Uh, I don't remember in this image, maybe it's uh, five um, quality of five. Uh, up to 100 in uh, JPEG compression. So the image is very low. Then on, uh, when you receive the image, you will decompress it. And what we will use is uh, uh, an algorithm uh, on the cloud that allows us with deep learning to denoise and to make super resolution. It means you can enhance, increase the size. And at the end, we are able to reconstruct this image compared to this one. So here it's uh, some presentation <coughs> with two kind of um, image uh, compression. So the classical JPEG uh, compression and uh, BPG, which is uh, another uh, format which is uh, which can be used on, for example, Raspberry Pi Zero. So this uh, compression is better, but it takes it takes much time. So uh, what is interesting here? For example, if you take uh, uh, JPEG uh, compression, so we took a data set of um, size 768 by, <coughs> by um, 512. So after compression, we can see if we compress image a lot, that image uh, size is between um, two or three uh, kilobytes. And if we can use uh, reconstruction, the SSIM, which is a cl classical structural uh, um, format to, to measure if the image has the same quality, we can see that we, can, we are able to reconstruct the image. So this is for uh, JPEG, and here it's uh, for BPG. If we are uh, using it without scaling, it's also possible. We can observe that with BPG, we gain nothing because uh, BPG uh, lose all the information that it's not possible to improve the information, but for JPEG, we can see, uh, we can improve it. So here, the compression file is a little bit bigger because we do not scale the image. Finally, uh, another work on which we are trying uh, to, 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 to work. Here we consider that we will send uh, images with the UDP protocol line by line. 
and we will consider that many lines are lost. So all the, uh, for example, if I ask you what you can see on this image, it will be very difficult for a human. We use exactly the same technique. We reduce the image, we transmit it. We uh, consider we have a lot of um, packets that are lost. So more than uh, half, maybe 80% uh, of the packets are lost. Each packet represents a line. We are in RGB, so it means we have uh, three, um, three channels. And here, uh, the algorithm is able to reconstruct this image, here also, and here also. So we think this is a, a solution in scenario in which you have uh, some uh, failures in the transmission. So what is uh, the conclusion? We proposed something which uh, is based on a lightweight, ver lightweight version of SZ, uh, which is uh, uh, enabled to use on ASP32 or smartwatch uh, as uh, presented. We have defined a good trade-off, uh, and it's important to, to, to study it between the ratio uh, compression and if uh, the classification performance or the reconstruction uh, performance. In order to improve that, uh, we uh, have used a deep autoencoder for the data announcement, and we are able to work on uh, uh, data compression efficiently with low rate, and uh, we propose to use image reconstruction on the cloud. So I have finished. Thank you very much. Okay, Raphael, thank you. Uh, so, okay, as we said, a uh, little bit more uh, advanced <laughs> than what we had this morning, of course. Uh, we wanted to, to go uh, in, more, in more detail. Uh, maybe to, to, to be sure people connect with what we have. Uh, currently, what we have shown this morning is acquiring an image with a camera and uh, on a single computer. And here in your case, in the cases, you, there were several, uh, several uh, systems uh, that can acquire and transmit information to, uh, uh, to the a global server. And uh, with another place where you would uh, do some processing. So can you explain uh, explicitly what you call the edge uh, in, in, this, uh, in this architecture? Yes, so uh, in fact, uh, the edge here is uh, classically, so if we are here, the edge is um, a Raspberry Pi, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, so here we have a very small device like SP32 or a device, uh, so if you, yeah, SP32 or anything that can, uh, that is not uh, uh, powered with energy. Um, and uh, if you are uh, dealing with 1D signal, of course, it can be a Raspberry Pi. If you are dealing with images, the reconstruction needs to be, it can be stored here in the Raspberry Pi, uh, three or four, for example. And then uh, if you want to make the whole processing, uh, you need to use a, a bigger server with a cloud computing. Okay. But, but in the scenario I, I presented, it's only, um, yeah, we, we consider we have only one, one uh, IoT device, and we will do that for all the uh, IoT we have, but uh, they are not connected uh, together. Okay. Uh, and so... Um... Uh, so in our case, actually, we managed to do some processing on each uh, Raspberry Pi. We, uh, because we acquire images every, uh, let's say we said this morning, 15 minutes, we have 15 minutes to, to process a single uh, image, uh, which is, uh, I mean, good enough uh, for uh, even if, uh, for a long calculation. Uh, so uh, uh, how would you compare this kind of constraints uh, by uh, comparison with um, the IoT more for uh, health and earth rate uh, evaluation. That, does it open 